Welcome to the party. I'm not here right now, but I want you to listen very carefully. Enough talk. It's showtime. Hello and welcome to Bags of Action. My name's Steve. My co-host is Pete. Hello. This episode, we're going to be talking about The Equalizer 2 from 2018. We previously discussed Equalizer 1 um, a while ago now. So, mm. interestingly, we said this is the only film that uh, Denzel Washington has done a sequel to. And it's also the returning director as well, Antoine Farquhar. And the same writer, I believe, Richard yeah, Wink. Richard Wink yeah. as well. So... Yeah. It, an interesting film, the fact that he came back, so there's yep. something there, and it was four years, I didn't realize that long, four years after the, after the, the other one. So what were your first thoughts on uh, having him come back before you actually saw it? I was excited, definitely, because uh, we both liked the first one a lot. Absolutely, um, yes. I liked it enough to, I bought it for my dad for Christmas, and then he liked it too. Uh so yeah, I really enjoyed it. Was really interested to see where they would go with the second movie, um, and they added Pe- Pedro Pascal to this, which was interesting. Mm-hmm. So no, I was like, yeah, exactly the same. Because quite often, like it's like the second Sicario film is that they make a second one, but one of the actors is gone or the director's changed. It's not quite the same. I thought if they if they've all come back together, then they must have a story that they want to tell. And like I say, for Denzel to do a a sequel. Um, that could be part of just the time we're in where everything's a franchise. But at the same time, if he's never done one before, then, uh, yeah. So no, I was very excited. But I was very much looking forward to this. Yeah, me too. It's, as you say, for all those reasons. And I think there was more stories to tell because obviously the property is based on a TV show that was very episodic, but it never really built in the same way that TV does now because that wasn't a feature of television back when it was on. So I thought with the film, there's places to go and they could perhaps have a thread running through it in the background, which mm-hmm. they do to a small degree, continuing this from the previous one, but but not massively. And there was quite yeah. an episodic feeling to this film because there's quite a few vignettes which relates to the TV yeah, yeah. series as well. Yeah, very much so. And I think, I guess it's a bit like, in John Wick in a way, the first John Wick film is just a guy being drawn back into a life he's left and then the second film it's about this whole world that he used to be in which is all very kind of stylized and over the top so in a way this is a little bit like that because in the first film he's a guy working in i don't know home depot or being q or whatever and then you suddenly realize that there's more to him but i guess in this one he's drawn a little bit into the world he used to be in but it's not in a over the top stylized way it doesn't have that big tonal shift between film one and two no. it's just a slightly bigger world and you get to see a little bit more of what he's capable of mm. yeah so initial thoughts then what do you what do you what did you feel about this one um i really liked most of it that's <laughs> what i'm gonna say okay I want, I, this is interesting because we've got, we both have no idea what the other one is thinking right now exactly um it. I don't want to jump straight to the end because, but yeah, it it builds really well. Like it starts off on a train going to Turkey. He's um, kind of undercover, and he's. I really like the fact that he's off doing these little missions that are basically helping people. He is the equalizer after all, and yep. that's what he's doing. Um, Odds against you, and yeah, and it's a little bit different here, I think, because he's not been hired from his newspaper ad. Even though I think did the first film end with him placing the ad? I can't remember. It did. He placed yeah. it on. I think it was even on the internet. He put it on like uh, a on, on the a, internet Craigslist on a post board <laughs> somewhere that said right. the, it said the original text. Odds against yeah, yeah. you, you know, need help. Call Equalizer. But with this, it feels which I actually preferred in a way. It's like more of a Robin Hood type thing. He's like he know he knows people need help, but then just sort of secretly does it. Um, or it felt like that was what he was doing. I didn't get the feeling that he was hired to do this job in Turkey. It just felt like the woman he used to buy books from had maybe told him his, her daughter had gone. Yeah. Um, and off he'd gone to do it. And he's just like, I really like I, that. I thought that was an interesting shift. But he's moved it. He's relocated to Boston, isn't he? He's a Lyft driver. We don't have Lyft in the UK, but I'm, it's another Uber, Uber type, type thing. thing yeah. yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. And he's a real people person. He's open to languages and culture. He just comes across as a really nice guy. I was saying to to my wife when I was watching it at the end, I said, oh, it's good, isn't it? You know, I said, on one hand, he's really nice and he's kind of lovely to all these people. On the other hand, he's a ruthless killer. And she goes, I said, he's got this real good sense of balance. And she went, that's because he's the equaliser. <laughs> which, <laughs> nice. Which, ma- which makes sense. Good pun, good pun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, this film, for me, is a very mm-hmm. different animal to the first yeah. In some ways, it felt if they'd done the same thing again, this film would have been boring. It would have been Iron Man two because yep. it's quite a distinct shift and it's a very different film. Seventy percent of the way for me, it was Iron Man three. Some people are instantly not going to like it because they'll be yep. like, "Oh God, he's it's so slow and there's all this talking. Where's he get to the shooting? Where's the killing? Where's the chopping up?" And there are some moments of that, but unless you care about the characters, if, if it was just another film of him snapping arms and stuff for 90 minutes, I would have been bored. So Me I'm too. glad there was a, a change yeah. in direction. I think as well that maybe that's why you came back to it, because this is a fully rounded character, yes. which you don't always get in action movies. You get a sense of who he is. He's a father father figure for various people. He's also like a surrogate son to people. He's using his Lyft driver job to be a real people person. He obviously really cares about everybody around him. He's still got his kind of OCD and his timing thing with his watch, mm-hmm. which I'd forgotten. Yep. Um, but he is. But when he does need to throw down, he throws down. And it's it's all close-up kind of fighting stuff. And he he's terrifying. Absolutely. In those, but, but, for, but for brief moments. And I love that. It's not like Jason Statham kind of wading in and whatever. It is literally a man who you would pretty much walk past on the street. And then you do something wrong. And he breaks your arm. <laughs> And then he goes back to being what he was like before. And it's like, you know, he's got that stillness about him, which I think's really, really intriguing. So the interest, yeah, I agree. A really interesting thing I noticed, which I, I may not have realised in the first one, I probably did, I don't know, is, is that stillness, stillness, as you say, because he never loses his temper throughout oh. the film, he, uh, except for a couple of moments. Whenever he's talking to these people who've done something bad, the guy in the train at the start... Um, the five guys in the hotel, five or six guys. He's very calm. He's very quiet. He's very collected. He's you know you give me you give me, give me a five star review and it's all very quiet. Yes. The only time he loses it is when he's talking to um, the young guy who he's helping. Um, Miles, sorry, yeah. my, is it Miles? Yeah, I think it's Miles. Miles, yeah. when he he's basically saying, oh, you know, I'm I'm going to do this and do that, and he goes, really? You you want to know? You want to know? And he, and he absolutely loses it. Yeah, yeah. And Denzel's right in Miles's face, saying, you don't know death and you don't know pain, and it's like, wow, all of that is right there under the surface. Yeah. But because he's so he's OCD and he's always in control and he's always so tightly wound, that's the only time you see the crack that comes out. Even when you know we'll come onto it, the we we'll spoil this film yeah, all, yeah, yeah. all the way. When he loses his friend, he never loses his cool, except no. for at that moment. And I just thought that was very telling. Yeah. And I think what I really like here, again, he's kind of emotionally detached, like you say, until it's someone he knows. And then you do see something in his eyes mm. that he is genuinely hurt. Um, yeah, it's like, it's, it's, again, it's that thing of make an action movie, but with a really, really good actor. Oh, it yeah. makes a huge difference. Yes, yeah. And as you're saying about the fighting, I like the fact that when he goes to town and he starts fighting, it, it isn't the 27 punches in the chest and then a roundhouse and they get knocked out. It's like, no, no, no. Yeah, obviously Denzel isn't special forces and all the rest, all the rest. Of it, but someone's taught him and someone showed him how to choreograph the fights, that they look really quick and really painful and he puts people down in the fastest time and the quickest way possible to do the maximum damage. Like, at one point, I swear, he, he he jigsaws one guy's arm into, like, an S shape. Yeah. And I, I, I had to look away from the screen. I was yeah, like, yeah. oh, ho, 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 <laughs> that looks so painful. It looks so bad. And the crunching sounds, oh, man, the Foley people had their work out on this film. Yeah. Yeah, they did. It, it's, but he takes out multiple people. But usually, when you see that thing, it's like they queue up one by one, and exactly. it's all very you know. You, you think you think he'd never do that, but you actually he is again. It's a military thing. It's like a Krav Maga type thing. It's just he's just looking. He's already. Worked, I love the fact he's already worked through the scenario before he starts. Yeah. 
So they uh, they've got no chance. No. I love that. I absolutely <laughs> love that. There's the say the guys that have been abusing this the woman. Yeah. Um, and they put chucked him in his cab, and then he goes back in, and I just thought. I don't feel sorry for any of you, nope. but you are going to get fucked up. <laughs> and right then, now. He takes out one of them with yeah. the credit card and just yeah, slices yeah, him yeah. across the forehead. Yep. It's like, <gasps> oh, no. Oh, dear. And he snaps one guy's neck, just pop. I was yep. like, oh, my God, this is going to hurt so bad. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. When, when you get a chance to, you know, cheer extreme violence. That was one of the few times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he's, as you say, most of the time, caring, kind, compassionate, giving, supporting his neighbours. But when he flips that switch, he's absolutely terrifying. Oh. And I do love, you said about the way he is with Miles. And that that moment was really shocking. Yeah. Because he's, he's like giving him a bit of advice and he, like, he doesn't know him that well. And, he's, and then he's really like, and you think well, he, he basically, well, this guy, the guy's brother died, didn't he? The guy was a boxer and yeah. I think was killed in a gang banging kind of incident. Um, I'll rephrase that. Um, and I think he's basically trying to teach him a lesson, but he teaches him in such a powerful way. And then he's trying to steer him away from that life. It's really um, he chucks him a Tennessee Coates book as well at one point and tells him to go away and read it. I thought it was um, really clever because I didn't know where that was going when this guy comes out and starts, you know, talking about painting the wall. I thought, was he the guy who did the graffiti? Is he going to be a, mm. a problem for him? But yeah, actually, no, yeah. it's, it's, it was, no, it's really, really well done. Yeah, I know. So the, the interesting thing was he was he was reading that book anyway, Right. Okay. Um, so I, I saw that at one point he's. It's when he's um, sat reading his books. He's reading the the, the Tanahasi Coates book, and then later yeah, yeah. on he pulls a, a different book, even the same book, off his bookshelf and throws it at Miles and says, mm-hmm. "Read this, and then we'll talk." And I thought, that's nice. That's a and nice. It links touch. in because it all. I love the kind of thing I really like. The more we talk about it, is this like you know you have to kind of set up and pay off but all the little bits are interwoven like the first the girl that he saves at the start his mum is is it a librarian or a bookshop i bookshop can't remember owner. bookshop and he's like she are you still working through the hundred books you need to read before you die or whatever and yep. he's like oh yeah i'm gonna start on another list soon you think it's just yeah it's just this guy who is lethal but is basically he's a widower and he's just feeding his mind mm-hmm. and it's just it's it's yeah i think it's a I know I was a massive, massive fan of the TV series when I wasn't particularly old enough to have been watching it. But hey, um, but I really like this, and I think I like the character even more in the second one because in the first one it's very much who is he, who is he, who is he, who is he, and then you get the whole kind of end sequence, which is basically just him reaping havoc. Yeah. But here we know that we know what he's capable of, so they've had to use it in other ways. I thought they got the balance of like one minute he is killing people and the next minute he's reading a book yeah i thought they got it really well because you just you you know you really care about him and you care about the people around him because he does yeah he's helping that old guy trying to retrieve a painting of his sister from uh, he's obviously a jew who survived the concentration camps and he's trying to get this painting that was taken off him by the germans and prove that he's the owner because it's the only thing he's got left apart from one faded photo of his sister and he keeps taking him from the old people's home to court to photocopy shop to print you know papers to take him back to court to try and help him do that he's got the young lad miles um he's painting the walls for his neighbor who's got her garden um you know and it's just all these little kind of vignettes whilst he's also driving around and you hear conversations that he hears in the back seat of various people and it's snippets of their life which i thought was quite nice And he looks really happy Mm. in those moments because he is this kind of calm, quiet kind of guy. And you think, oh, is he? And obviously, say he is still suffering from grief. But you just see he's almost kind of gone, right, how do I need to live my life to be happy? Okay, I'm in this community. I'm going to help people. And I'm going to basically just let their, you you know, osmosis almost, get their life stories and stuff and help that. It's just... It's uh yeah, and I this is all stuff I didn't think about at the time. I'm just like, well, this is a cool film, and he's breaking people's arms. Yeah, um, yeah. But that's the wonderful thing about going back over it. You just start to notice the real kind of the subtleties. Yeah, um, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And then I think we it's around this point that we get um, someone returning from the first movie. I think the first time we see 
Melissa Leo's character and her husband, Pil, Bill, Pil Pullman. Uh, Bill Pullman. Yeah. Uh, as well. Yes, from his old days. And she knows mm. that he's still going out and doing things and helping people because she says, you know, I like it. Didn't, doesn't she say something like, I like this Robin Hood stuff that you're doing? Yeah, that's right. And he's calling in the odd favour, like when he needs a bit of information or something, he sends it to her and she goes and finds out for him and uh, passes information back. Um, but she's the only one, and obviously her husband, that know he's still alive. Yeah. Everybody else from his old life that's right. believes he's dead. he's dead because he uh, apparently died in an explosion. That's right. And I like, I kind of, with a lot of these films, it's like, are you back in the company or are you completely out? But I like the fact he's kind of, he's found this balance of being kind of like, well, I want to still do this stuff and I've still got my contacts and she's still, they're still my friends. Yeah. But I also have got this quieter life. It's kind of a really, um, obviously none of this can last, but uh, yeah, it is, um, it's really well set up. And we, I think we got to get a sense of the relationship between him and her and her husband in the first film quite mm-hmm. a lot. Yeah. So it was kind of good to see them back and you straight away can kind, of, kind of remember those relationships. Yeah. And unfortunately, of course, uh, she is attacked and murdered in a hotel. Which yeah. I thought that would send him into a rage. But, yeah, I did too. But it didn't. It didn't no. as, uh, nearly as much as the bit with Miles, which was quite surprising. No, it just kind of he collected himself and just like he knew what he was going to do. He knew exactly what he was going to do. And everyone and anyone responsible for that was going to die. Mm. Um but yeah, it comes back to that kind of calmness and thing that he does. What I really liked, so there's a basically there's these kind of people. It's, the actual villain side of the story is a little bit unclear, I thought. But there's kind of these contractors, and they've they've killed a couple in Brussels that she's gone to try and investigate. And then once she's when she's there with her new partner, who's played by Pedro Pascal, she's basically attacked by robbers in inverted commas in a, a lift uh, elevator. Uh, and then back in it ends up back in a room. No, no I it's really like in a room. It's as she's going in the it? door. They burst in the hotel. Right, room. but they were sorry, but they were in the lift with her. They, they were, yes, yeah, yeah, yes, and they were just two gangbangers. But I like the fact that she fights like McCall. Yeah, she's try. She's got like people taking people out with her legs down low, and she's an older lady. She's hitting them with things. She's stabbing them, and I love the fact that their fighting style is belatedly from the same training. I thought that was really clever. Um, and then they didn't make her just helpless. You know, they basically thought, well, yes, okay, she's not she's not in a field role anymore, but she has been, and you don't you don't unlearn that stuff. No, no. She uh, she picks up things and stabs them and it it see at first it just seems like it was a, a robbery gone bad, except that yep. they were shouting, Where's the money? And at first I thought, What's going on? Why are they saying that? And she's yeah. saying, What money? There is no money. Um and then you see them partying later on and getting very drunk and just having a great time uh, until someone blows them up. Yep. Which was uh, interesting and unexpected. <laughs> yes. And then you think, oh, okay, what's this? Because it does, it did feel like, okay, she's gone to investigate this thing and then she just happens to have been attacked and you think something's wrong. Um and I did start to smell a rat in where it ended up going. I did kind of see coming a little bit, but um, yeah. So he, the, the person she's with, we didn't know. I don't think he was mentioned in the first film. Was Dave, who was his partner back in the day for yep. seven years, yep. and who thought he was dead. Um, I made a note here saying, "Oh, they should have called him Mickey," and then later crossed that out um, <laughs> for a number of reasons. Um, but yeah, so and we essentially we kind of yeah you start to realise that this is not a random robbery; it's uh, an assassination linked to the other killing that was we saw earlier in the film. Yes, so his former colleagues have become a hit squad for hire. Yeah, which and I was surprising. Yeah, this was the bit. I mean, as soon as Pedro Pascal walked on screen. I thought it doesn't look, it doesn't look different without a beard, um, and then I thought, <laughs> <laughs> or without a, without a helmet, I'd oh, imagine. Yeah. Uh, and then I thought, hmm, okay, we don't know him. He's a he's a reasonable named actor. He seems to have quite a big part. One of two things: he's either going to completely nutly save the day, hmm, but it's called the Equalizer. It's kind of about one guy. Okay, he's Dodge. 
And that was my thought process <laughs> as soon as you saw him. So then I was looking for the for what he was going to do wrong. Yeah. So when um, when Robert goes to see him in his house, I thought, oh, he's there with his kids, which I guess is deliberate. It's like it's yeah. a little bit of bait and switch. He's there with his kids. He can't be that bad. And then, oh, shit, he is. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah I was right. I was right. He's a wrong one. Um, there's no real re- – I, I did find – for me, this is where the film started to wobble a bit and right. lose its way um, because it had been so crisp and so tight. And then you're like, why are you doing it? Well, it's the name on a piece of paper. And it's, I, I, I don't know. I didn't, they didn't feel like enough of a justification for why it was, uh, the work, you know, the work has dried up. But then it just, what did you think? So from what he was saying, the way he justified it was that I got the feeling that he'd been, been burnt by, working for the government that you know they say they say to him go here and do this kill this person and he does it and he believed he was doing it for country and you know it was for the the right reasons and the people they were killing were seen as you know bad in advertent commas and then they essentially said thanks for your service you're done and him and the rest were not fired but let go after so many years and he lost faith in the system and he lost faith in the powers so he took uh private contract yeah. job essentially doing the same thing where they get a name on a piece of paper and they kill him kill the person they don't ask why they don't care this time they get a load of money for it instead of being told yeah. they're doing it for the greater good which is why dave could afford to live in a giant house and have True. two or three kids and a big car and all of yeah. that i think it just was so sudden because we I, i'm going to compare it one of the film's action movies i always think when i kind of see the point of this villain which i guess is you know the best films the best books you have as much understanding of the villain as the as the hero and you yeah. can flip the film around it can be there i think the rock i always cite as an example because um although i've forgotten the name of the actor ed harris ed yeah. harris's character in that i go well i don't agree with you but i can see your point yeah. i can see you have a point to make and you 100 percent believe it i think here maybe because we just didn't see the character enough mm. you know Maybe it's because they're just being reintroduced to each other. It just felt a little bit. I don't know. I don't, it didn't feel set up enough for me. Right. Um, but, but, and the biggest thing for me is like, then you see, we get kind of like he, like a revelation of what happened. And not only did he allow her to be killed, he actually was the one who stabbed her yes. in, to give her the final blow because she wasn't quite dead. Nope. And you, and you just think, even if you went through all this and you were a bit disillusioned, that's still the person you work with. I don't know. Um, but hey, I'm not a trained killer. What do I know? <laughs> I, well, I think he said the only two people who could have worked out what were going on were her and you. And you were dead until you yeah, walked yeah, up yeah. to me in the park. So he thought, you know, with, uh, um, with Susan gone, that's, you know, they're fine. His tracks are until he yeah. then turns up and goes, oh ah, right, and then he starts looking into it, and he must have known at that point McCall's going to keep digging and keep digging, which is why one day when McCall's driving, a guy gets in the back of the yeah. car and says, oh, yes, this is this stuffed rabbit or whatever it was is for my daughter, <laughs> and yes, take me to the airport, and McCall knows straight away. Yeah, yeah, he's, I love that. He's clocked the guy. He knows he's dodgy. Uh, he bounces him around the car, sees him coming in with a knife, bounces him around, gets the guy's gun and just boop, 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 dead straight away no messing no kind of you know faffing yeah. just like two or three shots to the head it's like oh man dumps the body burns the car so it, it, it's that thing of he thought it all through he knows what the police will look for he knows how to get rid of yeah. the evidence he knows how to get rid of the body and off he goes yeah Again, yeah. Lou was like, "Well, so he's just that's ridiculous. He's just killed him in his in his cab. How is he going to get rid of the? Oh, okay, it's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's he going to do? Oh, yes, I see. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. Well yeah. done. Fair enough. Well done. Well done, Robert. Yes, you nice, thought nice this one. through. Well equalised. <laughs> <laughs> that's not your first uh, first murder, I see. Oh, okay. Yeah, All right. Good. Yep. Yes, yeah, so put that on your LinkedIn profile. Well done. Good at did body disposal. Yep. Tick. Yeah, yep. Certainly. Because, well, you know, you'd be rubbish. Imagine if you did all, you know, most of these films, they do leave a ridiculous trail. I always get, you know, when I was younger, particularly, I'd be like, how are you going to get away with all the stuff you've done in this film? But here, you know, he's covered his tracks. It's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like the bit where he tells Dave that he knows it's him. He's gone to his house 
Yeah. And then he goes outside and all the boys are there and he's talking to them. And then he says, oh, I'm just going to get a lift with the, the wife and kids. Yeah, is that okay? Okay, great. And he, he's smiling. Yeah. He starts smiling at Dave. And he picks up the little girl and he gets in the car with the wife. And it's like, <sighs> yeah. That, I think that was kind of rubbing salt in the wound a bit. That was a bit cheeky. Yes. <laughs> but I think he needed to kind of show himself because they come for him. Yep. I think he wanted to, well, he does. I think the rest of the film is him flipping it as all good people in these situations, these type of films do. He's like, no, you're not coming after me. I'm coming after all of you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but they, and do I guess the the thing, others... they do the thing that they always say in films. Yeah. They go after everybody around the person first. Yes. Yes. Starting with Susan's husband, I think. Yes, that's right. And he hides him away at a motel where no one will find him. Mm-hmm. After sneaking him out there. Um, I thought he would have killed two of them in the house there, but he didn't. No. Um, he got uh, um, Brian, played by Bill Pullman, out and then just left. I thought, oh, okay, that's that's fine. Um, maybe there just wasn't time. Maybe. <laughs> he did, but he, did, he stopped, you know, he, once she was killed, he stopped checking his watch. Did he? So I think... I, yeah, and I wonder if that was a deliberate thing. Like before, it's all precise, it's all very, and now it is more emotional because he's not having to do that. Mm, yeah. Or it's a co- or it's a coincidence, or they forgot. <laughs> one of those things. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of those things. But I, you know, I like to think it was deliberate because it is. <laughs> it was something he'd done all the way through the first film and all the way through the first half of this film. Mm. Um, I um. So, I thought the scene with Miles in the apartment when they go to Paul's home and Miles is in there painting, that was quite actually quite tense. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, you know, and everyone needs a bookcase that's got a panic room behind it. I'd like one. Yeah, me too. Who wouldn't want a secret room in the house? It's so cool. A two-way mirror. Exactly, exactly. But I think... I like this because it was very tense and you weren't sure if he was going to get away and stuff. And then he leaves too early, which was clever because he literally, I thought, hang on, they've literally just walked, the door is barely closed and you're already up and out of that safe room. You want to just chill there for 20 minutes, maybe just like get yourself together. And then they got him. But I found that really weird because they grabbed him. They've got leverage. They've got a person that Robert cares about. Maybe. And they, they, yeah, but they, they, He's kind of the backup plan. I found that really weird because you almost forget that they had him because the whole kind of end sequence, he's not... And maybe it's too predictable. Maybe it would be too predictable for them to go, you know, you've got the person come out with a gun to his head kind of thing that other films do. But I thought, I don't know, it was a weird decision, I thought, to capture him, but then only make him the very, 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 very last contingency plan. Um yeah, he was he was the backup in case something went wrong, yeah. which it inevitably did because they were dealing with McCall. And he said, he says to McCall, true. what did you teach me? Always have a contingency plan. Yeah, and the true. contingency is, if this isn't working, we'll kill the boy yeah, and let yeah. you come out. No, valid point. Mm, valid he, point. He says, I don't know if you care about this guy or not, but, you know, I'm going to put a bullet in the middle of the car and in the boot and he's in, he's in there, he's in the trunk, so. Um, so go on. What did you think of the storm and the whole kind of... Because we're more or less at the end now, the yeah. big end sequence. So it was an interesting place to have a fight and a shootout and all the rest of it. I've not seen that done before. No. I'm trying to think of another fight scene that's been done in the middle of a storm. Um, Cape Fear, maybe? I don't know. Yeah. Um, that's probably the closest thing I can, I can think of. It, it was a bit weird because... Yeah. He told them where he was going, so obviously Dave would know where to find yeah. him. Yeah, which is back I, to his old his old town, wasn't it, where him and his wife lived and where his wife died, I think? Yeah, So, but I got the impression that he'd only just arrived because he drives over the bridge, reverses the yep. car into the place, and, and then gets out. But when the blokes are walking around, there's pictures of Susan pasted on buildings all over. Maybe he sent the old man to the copy shop... <laughs> got him to do it first I don't know maybe. no I know what you mean it, it is a strange either it, they... I'll do what you said it's either it, he had been there before or they just didn't think about timing or they just got it wrong or they went oh we haven't really explained this storm hang on a second let's put in an extra scene where the policeman goes you can't go there the road's closed and he's like I'm just going to get one thing 
the gas is switched on. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. That, that old chestnut. And they're putting, it's been like an hour and a half. What's he doing? <laughs> What's he doing? How long does it take to check the gas? Yes. Um, oh, she... <laughs> but I did enjoy the fight scenes there. I, I enjoyed the inventiveness. I enjoyed the fact that he used different things. The, the bit in the bakery was particularly nasty because he knew their techniques because he knows how they clear buildings. Kick open yep. the door, throw in a flash bomb, wait till it clears a, sec- a second, and then go in after it. They did it on the first couple of buildings. You know, look from a call going, he's not there, then they go in. And then when he gets that third one with the old bakery, and he, put, he starts the fans going and puts the flour everywhere. Oh, that was, that was great. Yeah, yeah. It was. It was. It was. I think I was quite thrown by this whole ending because he kind of had lured them somewhere. And they think, well, why would you go there? You know what he's like. Why would you? I don't know. I found it a bit weird. But I think they wanted to make it very different because yeah. I think the the first film, the ending, is all in the kind of warehouse. It's all in the dark, pretty much. Yeah. And it kind of has got its own feeling to it. This felt like an almost a different film in some ways. Um, and it just threw me. And I think, but the more we talk about it, maybe I need to watch it again because it, it threw me to the point I was like, I'm not really sure what's going on here um, because it felt so different. But I don't know, stylistically, like you say, it was a very interesting choice because I've never seen anything quite like it before. No, like he takes out one guy with a harpoon, one guy yeah. with his own flash grenade, one guy with a knife and cuts him like 17 times. And then the bloke finds him and goes, are you okay? And he's there like... Yeah. And he's just like squirting <laughs> from a dozen wounds. It's like, yeah, that guy's not getting back up. Um, <laughs> I can't even remember how he kills the other guys until the final fight, but they all die in really unpleasant ways. Yeah. But even with this, because you think you know, sometimes in these things, they can build up and build up and go, oh, now he's going to meet his match. But no, he still does it very quickly and efficiently because he is that good. Yeah, yeah. The fight between the two of them on the roof with the. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Again, it comes down to a knife. And mm-hmm. oh, that was nasty as well. Just like yeah. he knows where to cut and he knows how to do it to take someone out quickly. I mean, that they're, they're evenly matched up to a point, but equally, McCall is the older guy and the veteran, and Dave, you know, was his partner for seven years. But McCall's been doing it a lot longer, a lot longer, and he just absolutely takes him apart. Yeah. yeah. Oh, gooey, <laughs> proper gooey. <laughs> Yeah, and then there's like a, a, quite a touching yeah, yeah. resolution at the end. I mean, the, you know, Miles is okay. Miles goes back to school. Goes to school, yeah, um, yeah. I like the little part where he goes, you know, and shit, and this, I mean, I mean stuff. He corrects himself. <laughs> yeah, McCauley yeah. isn't even there, but yeah. he, he, connect, he corrects his language himself. Yeah. Nice. The, I think the ending is like how much of an influence he's had on all these people. Because that's happened. The painting on the wall's been redone. Yep. It, I think I'm assuming Miles did the new, the new mural. Yes. Um, the lady whose garden had been destroyed, and then he thought, he said, "Oh, we're sorry, we didn't believe you, old man." And I thought, oh, "Don't be the painting. Don't be a five million pound painting." No, no it's, it's much, it's much better than that. It was his sister. Yes, that yeah. was hell of a surprise. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was thinking the painting and be like, yeah. "Oh, when he gets uh, the painting, uh, it's like, no, it's not the painting. This is even better." It was never about the painting. No, it wasn't. It wasn't, and that was the whole no. point. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so he, you know, he gets resolution for his friend. Mm. He's he's helped all of these individuals. They've all um, all their lives are a bit better for him being there. Um, he's completed his hundred books to read, and then it's like, okay, what's yep. next? And he's back to the same place. Whereas like the first one, it kind of you knew he couldn't carry on with where he was. Mm-hmm. Um, but I like the fact because quite often in these kind of films, it's like, and then they, you know, chuck their jacket over their shoulder and off they go to the next place. Particularly with this kind of character, but I like the fact that he's actually everything's been put back nicely at the end, back to back to his building, back to his community. Yeah, yeah. But it was a very different film. It really was. I, I at first I thought it was slow, and then I thought, okay, no, no, I've come in thinking it's going to be the same kind of choppy choppy snapping you know lots of russians taking them apart and that kind of thing and it isn't i was i was focusing on the wrong thing because the first film for all of that is all about helping this young girl escape the life that she's been trapped into 
the rest of it is just window dressing. It's just yeah. how he gets I mean, I, there. I think they do a good balance because like they throw you straight into the scene on the train yes. where he does kind of doesn't mess about there either. Yeah. And then you've got so they do pocket it with like the bit with the with the girl. He is still doing little I guess it's kind of more of a half and half. He's kind of doing a bit of this and a bit of yep. a bit of that. But it does remind I just I'd forgotten how ruthless he was. And then like twenty minutes in, I'm like, God, I do not want to yeah. get on the wrong side of this man. <laughs> five stars. This, this, don't forget this five fictional stars. I do not want to get on the wrong side of this fictional character. Yeah. Um Yeah, which is a you know, power to him. But yeah, it, I you're right, it is very different, but it's that age old thing, like if it's he's a really fine line to be different enough but true to the character mm-hmm. so that it doesn't feel so different that you're thrown, but it doesn't feel so similar. You just like, Oh great. You just tread the same story beats, but with a different bad guy. Yeah. Which I, a lot of Iron films Man do 2. on a sequel. Yeah, that's it. It's yeah. Iron Man two yeah. again. And I was like, mm-hmm. uh, what versus doing something different and keeping it true to the heart of the film, Iron Man three turning on its head, doing something really different. Um, yep, I'm with you there. Yeah. This was a good, a good progression. Um, I, as much as I, I would kind of like to see him do another one, I don't think they should. I don't know if they will. Maybe, you know, they could come up with another story. But with the TV series thing that I spoke of earlier, you know, with the doing a TV pilot, I probably don't think they will do another one because it would be rare for Denzel to come back for a third time for any kind of film. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, you know, Fuqua's got other things... Um, going on, he was shooting a Mark Wahlberg film here in Cardiff, of all places. Really? Uh, recently, yeah. Okay. They just they blew. I see them blowing up cars on my way to work every morning. It was a very surreal week. Nice. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, but they just literally the thing is a massive Hollywood film that came to a city for one scene. They closed the road for one scene. Really? And they did it did it for a week, and then that was it. So uh, armored car flipping over. Anyway, um, yeah. So he's doing other things. I guess Denzel's doing other things, and he's always tried to do a balance of like I really like about his career. There aren't, you know, there are some actors that get more and more into like the franchise world. Yeah. And there are some who just stay in the kind of more um, serious roles. But I think he's got a really good balance in kind of like he doesn't seem to be afraid of. You know, he's probably the only actor living now in Hollywood that hasn't been in a superhero film, which is all all the better for it, I think, because I think he's just such a great actor. He's, I've, I don't think I've ever seen him be bad in anything ever. No, no, no. He's uh, he's a very talented guy, really talented guy. So, are we ready to give it some scores? Yeah, I think you should go first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so. It's a different animal. It's an interesting film. It has connected tissue to the original TV series in the kind of episodic feeling of the film because he helps a number of people. That's the core principle of the character from the TV series beyond the character's name of McCall being the same. Um, there's some connections i almost wish i don't she because we know that his character is uh, his friends called susan i almost wish she was called control because that mm-hmm. would have made it you know a little bit yeah, extra yeah. extra juice to go back to the yeah. original um but we'll see but uh, if the tv version the new version we'll see what they do with it but there was uh, a more of a balance so, so so i think you're right i think this is kind of 50 50 the tv series was probably 80-20. 80% of it, or, or more, was all about helping people. 20% or less was about the other stuff that was in the past, that was behind him. Whereas this film is all about, he's moved on from it, however, he can't really leave that world, and it catches up with him, and he gets involved with it again. So it is a bit of a a move from McCall from the TV series. But it was fine, because it was still loyal to the source material. I like that it was something different. I like that it wasn't the same thing as you had in the first film. I don't even know what score we gave the first one. I think we may have given it a five bag. It was certainly a four or a five, I think, from both of us. Yeah, I, I did really enjoy it. I just, so I'm going to give it a four. I think it's okay. a really, really good film. It's worth your time. If you like the first one and you like Denzel Washington as an actor, I'd recommend watching it. Okay. Well, I would agree with all of that. Mm-hmm. Um it's interesting, I suddenly realised, 
I forgot as a kid watching Equalizer. I loved the show. I thought um, Edward Wood was was great. I loved McCall, but I was also a little bit frightened of him. There's that kind of father figure kind of way he had about him. You kind of respected him, but you kind of were a bit frightened of him, even yeah. though he was a nice guy and helping people. Yeah. And I'd forgotten that. And in the first film, I don't, didn't really get that sense. At one point in this, I think particularly when you said about when he went up to Miles with a gun in his face, and then later, a couple of moments, you'd think, this man, I'm really quite frightened of him, but I really like him. And I thought, oh, gosh, that is really, really true to the original character. And in a way, like he's a bit of a father figure to people. And McCall was a father figure to Mickey in the TV show. So I, in a way, I think this second film is a lot closer to the TV show yeah. than the first one was. The first one was so much about setup, whereas this is much more comfortable in it, in what it is. Now, I'm going to change my score from what I had down because the more we've talked about it, the more I realized that re- I'd, I had it down as a four and I, then I che- I'd put it down to a three because of the ending, because I really struggled with the whole storm thing. And it felt like it came out of nowhere. And it just, it, I, it felt so different from the rest of the film that I thought, right. It's a four is going to go down to a three, but the worst we talked about it, it's like, well, do you know what? Up to that point, it might well have been a five because I was absolutely loving it. So, <laughs> and it's, and the, you've kind of justified some of the things that I didn't quite get. Right. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I can't give it a three. That would be a massive disrespect to this film and a massive over respect to other films I've given a three to. Mm. Um, and there are no half bags, which have been drummed into me over the last many years. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to give it four bags as well. And I think I'm going to have to watch it again. I watched the first one a couple of times, so I might have to do the same here. Yeah. Yeah. I, bu- I bought this one. So I'm going to definitely one that I'll rewatch because it's uh it's fun to see to, to see the character progress. So, have you seen Equalizer 2? If so, get in touch and let us know. Have you seen the original TV series? What do you think of that? What do you think about the news that they're doing this new pilot version of a TV show coming up? A reboot or a refresh, as it were. Get in touch with us in usual ways. You can email us. You can join the Facebook group and talk to us about this episode and all of the other episodes. Don't forget, we release weekly episodes on our YouTube channel as well, 5 Minute Reviews. Like and subscribe. Yeah, like and subscribe, as Pete says. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, get in touch with and, and join in the fun. All right, Pete, Thank- wrap us up. Thank you for listening, if indeed you still are. Good night. Good night. You have been listening to Bags of Action. No bullshit. You'd better stick around for the next episode, because if you're lying, I'll be back.